So, you know, this is the time of day where my mind starts to kind of uh, slow down, but uh, so I got good news. We don't ask uh, our clients to lift a finger for SEO. Uh, so we're not going to talk about what you need to do. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to go through some stuff and you guys can just kind of enjoy. Uh, clicker. Thanks. So this is, uh, I'm going to stay brief on this because a uh, few people know this, but <clears throat> only 6% of your traffic, no matter how much you spend, comes from paid ads, from pay-per-click uh, via search. So <clears throat> we've got a client that spends $25,000 a month, and they, they also get you know, 6 8% at the most. <clears throat> so this is not a stat that I made up on the spot. <laughs> this is uh, Nielsen and Group M. If you're not familiar with Group N, they're famous for, uh, they're the agency that really spread Facebook to the rest of the world uh, once it, once it kind of got big here. <clears throat> so because of that, I'm not going to spend much time on paid, but I do want to point out that banners are not really the answer to that uh, conundrum because we are banner blind. Uh, so this is, a, this is a heat map, an eye tracking map, and you can see <clears throat> banners do not get the attention. So. Uh, a lot of the clicks and stuff that you're getting from display are errant clicks, also uh, bots. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm a career SEO. I've been doing this a long time. And uh, so I've seen all these changes over time. And, and uh, <clears throat> it used to be very, very simple uh, to win for pretty much whatever you want because it was basically an arms race. And, uh, on-page factors were kind of secondary, and you build links. Uh, links farms used to work great, and I could win for Grumpy Cat with my link monster if I wanted to over the Grumpy Cat, but of course it was more like payday loans and, and uh, you know, lead gen. So <clears throat> the reason was is because the spider was illiterate. It was basically just a counting spider. So the, uh, you know, it very much used to be that they could just count words, count links, count uh, <clears throat> images, they count how old your domain is. Uh, so that's very simple uh, methods. You know, there was, there's really a small, at that point, there's really a small uh, data set to go from. <clears throat> so it was very easy to kind of trick the spider and you could win for whatever you want. <clears throat> that's no longer the case. Uh, now the case is that Chrome browser is the spider. <clears throat> So uh, Chrome browser being the spider is a big deal. Okay, so Google uh, was the main supporter of the Chromium project. The Chromium project is actually an open source project that uh, leaned on the community of developers to develop Chrome. Uh, it's <coughs> and it is now the most used browser in the world, uh, worldwide. So how many people use Chrome? Everybody. Uh, how many people have ever seen this page? Couple. And how many have unclicked automatically send usage statistics and crash reports to Google? One, two. So that's plenty of a sample set. Uh, you don't have to have Google Analytics installed for Google to know every single thing that could possibly happen on your website. <clears throat> what that means is they know if people watch videos, they know if people scroll down the page, they know if they're, if, if they're reading your website, they know uh, every engagement statistic you could possibly imagine. <clears throat> it's checked by default, so, you know, it's, it's plenty. You know, a 30, 40% sample size uh, is, is plenty. <clears throat> this is recent from Wikipedia. The green is Google Chrome. So it's, it's pervasive. In May of 2013, uh, Google and NASA launched Quail, Quail is uh, the first real uh, push into AI that's, that has like a significant chance of success, uh, artificial intelligence, and they're using it for machine learning. This, uh, this device here is amazing. This is the closest as the human race has gotten to absolute zero. This is what uh, cools the chip. Uh, so, so it's quantum computing, essentially. Uh, D-Wave is the company, but it was a partnership with Google and, and NASA. 
course, uh, NASA's using it for space exploration and, and Google's using it to crunch linguistics. So, you're, so we're in a, at a point now where you're not gonna, you know, if people aren't reading your article about Hyundai Boston and the other one about Boston Hyundai, you're not tricking anybody. <clears throat> so now it's all about quality and it's all about engagement. The fact is you can already search on Google Chrome and sort by reading level. So you can filter your results by an intermediate or advanced reading level. So you see history of Boston here. Uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you click on advanced, uh, you're gonna get the bc.edu stuff. You're not gonna get uh, you know, uh, travel guides. <clears throat> so Google knows how you're, uh, how you're using mobile. They know what you're doing for uh, the mobile experience. They know what mobiles, uh, mobile users' experiences on your website. <clears throat> they know, you know, dwell time, dwell time. They know if people are scrolling, back button clicks. Um, before they had this really figured out with, with uh, getting the data from Chrome, uh, they, they focused a lot on the long click is what they called it. <clears throat> the long click is because Google has always had access to their website's data, google.com. What the long click refers to is Google wants, when you do a search result, they want you to click on the first result or two and not click back. If you click back, then they're gonna assume that you're not happy with what you found. If you click back, click back, click back, click back, and then do another search term, if enough people do that, they're gonna go back and look at that search term and, and, and try to determine why that is. <clears throat> so they've always had the long click, but you know, now they really have it all. So, so they, there, is no, there is no magic bean and there's no trick that's gonna, that's gonna trick Google. Uh, so that's, that's really a, a thing of the past. And while it was fun while it lasted, I actually like it better now uh, because it's more about quality and it's more about the user experience. <clears throat> so, you know, as, an, as a career and professional SEO, we're always looking for, you know, what are the data points? What is what can we maximize that's gonna give us preferential treatment in search results? And that used to be keywords, URLs, all that stuff. Now, <laughs> it's very much more, what is the experience? And what is the experience that, that users are having on your website? <clears throat> so speed matters. Uh, speed, of course, is, the, is probably the number one uh, factor aside from, from links. Uh, but uh, this is straight from the horse's mouth, and this is, this is the modern stuff. This is from 2010. <clears throat> so uh, we encourage you to start looking at your site's speed, not only to improve your ranking in search engines, but also to improve everyone's experience on the internet. <clears throat> everyone's experience on the internet is a key concept, right? Because Google has such a stranglehold on the web uh, that it's, they're not going to grow by increasing market share. They're going to grow by more web use. So they, they increase their profits uh, by us all using the web more. And so they actually have a vested interest in improving websites and, and in webmasters improving the experience for users because it's going to keep people on the web. <coughs> this, is, <coughs> this is the webmaster blog. So this is, the, this is from also from 2010. We're obsessed with speed. Today, we're including a new signal in our search ranking algorithm, site speed. Faster sites create happy users. <clears throat> so this isn't like a new, new thing. It's, it's been critical for a long time, but it is kind of a new concept uh, for most. <clears throat> this is again in uh, 2011. This is when they introduced PageSpeed Online, which was the predecessor to PageSpeed Insights, which we're gonna to get to. PageSpeed Online <coughs> was a free tool for webmasters to improve their websites and improve the speed. They, it, so, and, and what it did, you put your domain in, it would crawl it and take a few minutes, and then it would spit back a lot of advice and say, hey, you need to, you need to look at your render blocking JavaScript. You need to look at this, you need to look at that, you need to optimize your images, and, and uh, <clears throat> you can improve your, your experience for users. We're striving to make the whole web fast. PageSpeed Online allows uh, owners access to performance suggestions so they can make their pages faster. 
Who has Google Analytics? Everybody, right? Almost everybody. <laughs> uh, Google Analytics is very much an enterprise level uh, analytics program. Uh, is anybody familiar with Google Analytics Premium? Google Analytics Premium is the exact same software. Uh, it, it, it removes some limits. Uh, it removes, uh, if you have over a million uniques a month, you have to, you have to buy Google Analytics Premium. Uh, it also provides you the data. It provides you all of the keyword data that they would provide, that they provide for AdWords, except they provide it for organic for their Google Analytics Premium users. Google Analytics Premium is 150K a month and up, depending on your usage. I'm sorry, 150K a year. It's 150K per year. <laughs> uh, but it's still, it's a big jump from free. Uh, but what the point is, it's worth 150K a year. That's what most people don't realize. And, and of course, none of us have a need for over a million uh, you know, users to be tracked every month. And so, so you know, really, it would only be buying the data. You know, if you've got a professional on your side, you know what the data is. Uh, you don't have to have every single thing. Of course, we're still getting about 20% of it, so it's, it's not like we have no idea. <clears throat> so. Google Analytics, uh, you got to have it, and you've got to use it. You know, it, it, it's very deep. You can build your own reports. You know, you should use it. How about Webmaster Tools? That's good. Okay, that's more than usual. Uh, Webmaster Tools is also a very, very strong uh, software, that, and it is, is the only way that Google will communicate with you about your website. So if you have a manual action, which is a penalty, uh, Google will actually tell you in Webmaster Tools that you have either a partial or a full manual action. But if you don't have access to it or you don't know about it, they're not gonna send you an email. Uh, this is the only way that Google communicates to you about your website. <clears throat> it has amazing uh, stuff. It's gonna tell you crawl. Uh, errors. It's going to tell you about any crawl errors on your site. It's going to tell you uh, about any kind of uh, broken links or sitemap problems or robots problems if you're blocking pages that shouldn't be blocked. It's going to, it's going to uh, identify pages that are linked to on the web but that are not coming up. Uh, so <clears throat> very useful tool. It's going to show you structured data. That's what it is here. But you can see all this here is... Uh, is a lot of stuff. So it, I'm gonna really, I really wanna burn through this because I, I wanna have plenty of time for question and answers because that's my favorite part. So uh, <clears throat> Google Webmaster Tools, uh, it's not a lot of money. In fact, it's free, very free. Uh, pretty well as free as it, as it possibly get. Uh, aside from uh, analytics and Webmaster Tools being free, also, uh, Google Developer Tools. And so now that's getting to be a little bit more advanced, but uh, like I said, that Google has a vested interest in everyone making their website better. They do reward that with preferential treatment in search results. It's, it, that's how it is. So, so <clears throat> if your website's performing, people are happy on it, they're converting, they spend a lot of time on it, you're gonna win in search. Uh, so PageSpeed Insights, and I'm going to flip and do this live because I know somebody loves their website. So you can Google PageSpeed Insights. This is a free developer tool. It could not be any simpler. You put your domain in and you press go. So who loves their website? This was also the uh, basis for my analysis of the uh, composite. <clears throat> so this is uh, out of a possible 100, 100. So it, it scores your mobile website first and then it sco uh, scores your desktop site. Uh, the composites were out of a possible 200. We had the winner was an 84. 
uh, all professional websites score 200 on that test. Uh, so 59 is an F, and desktop 55. Who else? Okay. Okay. What's great about this tool also is that you have, it's gonna give you all of the suggestions, it's gonna tell you all the things that need to be fixed. So it's gonna tell you right here that you need to fix, you have two uh, blocking resources, uh, CSS is not optimized. Uh, you've, got, you've got a list here, right? So this is a great tool for you to hold your vendors accountable and we've, we talked about, we heard about that already, that, that, <coughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, and here's the beauty of this tool. It provides a list. When they fix those things on the list, you can go run the tool again. So when they tell you that they fixed it, you can go run the tool again. If, you're, if your number hasn't changed, they haven't done anything. There is no period of time. As soon as they make the fix, your number is going to go up. Uh, the truth is, as I'm comfortable sharing this, because nobody, none of the major providers in this industry are going to throw their entire software out the window and start from scratch, which is what it would take. So our clients all, uh, without fail, score in the green at the very least, uh, but most of them score 100. <clears throat> And that is a huge difference in user experience. That, and uh, another thing is, your bounce rate at 25%, which is the norm, you don't realize how much of that is actually people, you know, your site crashes all the time. As soon as, as, soon as uh, you get a shaky internet connection, a lot of these uh, bloated websites with all this code bloat, it's gonna crash. Uh, so this, this will kind of help you fix that stuff, uh, but you know, really, the, really the fix is to fix it, you know, once and for all. Uh, so, uh, anybody else want to do this real quick while I'm up, got it up, okay. Okay. What is it? Okay. So, pretty poor. What is it? I'm sorry. High end. H I H Y. Toyota. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I never tell anybody this ahead of time, but you can do this on your phones also. <laughs> okay, yes, one more. All right, that must be Dan. I knew you must be here. Jason, okay. Okay, great. Uh, Jack Madden 4 is a client. So. <laughs> so, uh, anybody else? Audi yes. Audi. Shoes. Shrewsbury. Okay. <clears throat> So, you know, I guess the moral of the story is here is that just because you overpay for something doesn't make it valuable. 
right? Uh, if it's an amateur website, it's an amateur website, no matter how much you overpaid for it. Okay, let's go back to the slides, because I, I got a bonus, and I want to get to question and answer also. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so this is a this is actually a recent client that had uh, their own Google Analytics account. That's a one other thing to point out. You should own your Google Analytics account. That's really important uh, because what happens is uh, we see a lot is that the vendors are actually in control of your analytics account, and then you leave and you lose all your data. Uh, it, you know, so you know whenever we set up analytics, of course we set it up for you, and and uh, and it's your account. Uh, the same with AdWords, it's very important that you own the AdWords account. <clears throat> this is a uh, client that we just launched recently. Uh, they were previously with Venn Solutions, and you see I've got this switch to uh, bounce rate and average session duration, okay? Their bounce rate was 52%. Uh, bounce rate is commonly referred to as abandonment rate. They were losing half of the traffic that they were buying and in every way generating half of the traffic uh, because they had a Venn Solutions site. Their time on site was two minutes and 24 seconds, which is pathetic. It's bad. If, that's, if your time on site is under three minutes, that's, an, that's terrible. Uh, this is the day, of course, this is the day we went live, so that was like in the middle of the day, and this is the next day. Their bounce rate went to 3%, and their time on site went up to seven and a half minutes. This is the same inventory, same dealership. So it's a dramatic change. <clears throat> it's a dramatic change. This is uh, Arlington Toyota. They felt like they were doing pretty good selling 180 cars a month uh, two years ago. And now it's been two years, they're selling over 500 cars a month. <clears throat> they outsell the nearest Toyota dealership in their PA by a hundred new units a month. A hundred every month. Can you just go to do another page insight? I want to make a point. We just from Scott Dubies. He's okay. got a he's got a different website. It's uh, Hyundai of Boston. Yeah, it's the same different same dealership. I'll, let me pull but, it back up when okay, I get yeah. back around. I'll do cool. that. Um, so, it's dramatic change. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a dramatic change. Uh, this is a Ford dealership in Atlanta uh, that I started with in 2008. They were running 32nd out of 34 Ford dealerships in their PMA. And in about six months, we had them in the top three. In about eight, ten months, they've been number one. They've been number one every single month in the market, in the Atlanta market, for five years. <clears throat> they are consistently in the top 100 uh, Ford dealerships in the country now. And here's what, something that's interesting about this particular dealership. They're not on TV. They don't do the radio. They're not in the paper. They do nothing traditional. They don't even use pay-per-click. He's adamant against pay-per-click. And one thing about that 6% uh, of the traffic is demographically that 6% is your secondary or I heard Paul say, marginal credit. Um, so that's not to say it's not worthy. Uh, it, you know, if you do secondary, then you want to be using pay-per-click. If uh, this guy, you know, he doesn't sell a car under 20 grand. It's all primary business. And so primary business comes from organic. Your typical career professional uses Google all the time. They don't even see the ads, just like you don't. You don't. So what works great outside of the automotive industry in pay-per-click is make money online scam. You know, trickery works great in pay-per-click. Uh, as far as a you know, uh, career person, you typically use Google every day. You don't see the ads. <clears throat> Bill Duby, I met in April uh, at the Internet Sales 20 group at the Revel. Uh, in, and uh, I told him, I said, you can expect 
increase in sales uh, in the next three months. And it's been five months, and his sales have doubled. <clears throat> this is uh, from our portal. Uh, we report on traffic and uh, rankings live. This is, uh, this is Sandy Springs Ford. You can see that they're, this is non-branded traffic from search engines, so we've pulled out all anything that has their name in it. Uh, broad terms are responsible for about 28%. Uh, specific terms are 13.5%, and unique is 59%. Unique search terms are 59% of his fresh traffic from uh, Google search and from all search engines. Unique means it was only searched, it was only searched one time, landed on a site one time in the month. So that's where the money is. These unique terms are, are the ones that, that's a buyer who's ready to buy now. And, and it just makes all the difference in the world. Effective SEO is about a broad net of search. It's not about one term, four terms, five terms. Um, so these are the broad terms, Atlanta Ford dealers, Atlanta Ford, Ford Atlanta Ford dealers, and they're great terms and they get a lot of traffic. But Ford Atlanta, that's a service term also. It's not just sales. So you know, that's somebody, Ford dealership, Atlanta Ford dealership, that's Ford dealership with no modifier. That's gonna be service. People are looking for service also. So, that, which we love service, but it's as far as increasing sales, it's these more unique and more specific terms. So these are the specific Ford dealership that have 2014 Mustang GT convertible in Georgia. Uh, Ford F-150 Roush, he gets a lot from, from that. Ford dealerships, uh, Atlanta area Ford dealerships. But here's the unique. And of course, could never fit this in a pie. It's all granular in the, in the back end, so you can see all of the terms, uh, but it just pulls out you know, kind of a random sample. So, <clears throat> where are the lowest priced 2013 Ford F-150 Platinum trucks in GA? When 2015 Mustang for sale in Atlanta? These are buyers, it's, it's very clear. So, uh, you know, there's probably some, some that started the year. 2014 Ford FX4 for sale in Atlanta, Georgia. That person is looking to buy a car now. And so when you have effective SEO and you have it all working, you're just stealing right from the bottom of the funnel. So, so uh, Sandy Springs Ford is owning the Atlanta market. His advertising budget is under 50K. He owns Atlanta and spends under $50,000 a month. So it's not about what you sell, what you make, it's about what you keep at the end of the day. And so he's just, he, he's not gonna add pay-per-click, he's not gonna deal with those people. Why? He's making so much money, he lives, he lives four miles from the dealership and his golf course is right there. He's, he's the ha one of the happiest man, uh, people I know. So these are the, <coughs> these are the type of terms. Uh, 2013 Toyota Sequoia Jacksonville, Florida. This is our, our dealership. Of course, they're, they're, they rank number one, and there's no dealers on this page. These are the terms that Auto Trader and Cars Guru and all this, these guys have figured out are important, uh, but we outrank them, and we outrank them with all of our clients. That's why it, it's so dramatic. <clears throat> we outrank them with your actual inventory, not a content page. We don't write content other than you know, your homepage content and stuff like that. Uh, so it makes all the difference in the world. Here's uh, Ford Focus Atlanta. This one, you know, we didn't beat car gurus this time, uh, but no dealers on the page. You see we're beating Auto Trader. And we'll, I want to show you some searches too live, but um, who knows who this is? <laughs> it's actually not Tim Martell. It's Craig Newmark. Craig Newmark is the founder of Craigslist. Who uses Craigslist? Everybody uses it. Who sells cars on Craigslist? Okay. Craigslist has become a great place to list a car ever since they charged, started charging $5. Um, it really has gotten rid of all the riffraff, and you can, you can list your cars, and it, it's worth it. But what I want to show you is a different way to use Craigslist, and it's extremely effective. 
I used this when I was on the front lines in the car business and it was a differentiator for me and launched me through the ranks and, and it actually in and out of the car business. <clears throat> so what I was doing was I was searching for the word trade instead of searching for any particular vehicle. I searched for the word trade and these are just samples. You can put any price you know, that makes sense for you. So you search for a minimum price of 8,000 in a year of 2007, that's a retailable piece. So what I'm looking for is the, is the seller that is looking to trade their vehicle. And you would be shocked what you find on there. You find leads all the time. Every single day, I'd find two or three leads that I would love to see pop in my CRM. So this is Boston. Uh, you can see when I did this, with, even with these tight criteria over 2007, they're asking for a price over eight grand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Probably more than 12 in the last two days were listed that include the word trade. When you see what these say, this took me two minutes to put this together uh, for this conference. Uh, partial trades encouraged. Okay, here's a 2008 uh, CTS. Interested in motorcycles. Who traded for a motorcycle they still have? <laughs> Everybody, you got one. Uh, sporty two-seaters, boxer, vet, Z3, Z4, Miata, etc. They're trade for anything. Anything. So here's how I do it. I call, I call this person up. I say, hey, I'm calling off of your ad on Craigslist. I, I want your, uh, your Cadillac. Tell me about it. They start telling you about it. As, but then you want to cut them off. I, what I would do is I would cut them off and say, well, look. I'm interested in your car. I am calling from a dealership. I'm interested in your car because I want it on my lot because I know I can sell it. I'm going to give you all the money on a trade. And if, they're, and if in their ad it says, you know, I'm looking to trade my Mustang for a truck, it's truck country out here. We've got so many trucks you can't stand it. The person who's trying to sell their car on Craigslist for over $12,000 is having a hard time. They're not getting a lot of offers. And they're probably selling it so they can go to a dealership and buy another car. Or they're trying to get out of their payments. A lot of these deals are you know, backwards where we're cutting a check. But in the, in the current age where it's hard to buy a car at auction, I think you still want to buy that car. Even if it is a backwards deal and you're cutting them a check. 10 minutes? OK. Uh, <clears throat> here's another one. Here's a nice Audi. Uh, I find myself needing a truck, though. I have a loan on it, and this is my payoff. This took me two seconds. I mean, I, I can pull up 10 of these and spend 15 minutes calling them, and I'm selling an extra five or 10 cars a month. And that extra five or 10 cars a month put me on the top of the board, made me hit all the bonuses. Uh, and so it, changed, it totally changed my whole financial situation when I was in the car business just by doing this. So I like to share that. OK, I want to go to, uh, I want to go back to live because I want to show you kind of what this looks like on the web. Roush. OK. Like I said, Sandy Springs doesn't buy ads. He owns Atlanta. He doesn't need to buy ads. He's number one, and he's number two, and he's number three. These are inventory pages. These are list pages. This is not content. This is F-150 Roush list page, F-150 all, and a details list page. So that's going to drop us right on one. We're, we're literally one click from Google search result to targeted inventory. So that whole thing about clicks through your website and you lose people as they, as they try to find the inventory. See how many Roushes he has to get this ranking. He has two. He has two Roushes and he has the top three results. So this is the list page for F-150s. Saw how fast that loaded also. There's, you know, 100, he's got 170, you know, F-150s. The, uh, let's just do a Ford F-150, Atlanta. 
So car gurus, auto trader, and there we are. That's our list page. <clears throat> there's cars, beaten cars, and there's the dealership. So, uh, do, uh, let's try something long tail. We'll do long, uh, Sonata Limited, Boston. 2014 Sonata Limited Boston MA, this is the kind of thing that uh, a lot of people would have you build a content page for. And that content page is not going to win. It doesn't. Uh, but, but my inventory page is going to win. And it's going to drop you right on an inventory details page. So it's effective. Uh, and, you're, and it targets the primary buyers, which is... Um, really an impossibility to replicate with the paid advertising. So at this point, I guess I'll open it up for questions because I'm sure there are some. Can you raise the microphone? Where's, uh, over yeah. here? There you go. Questions, Subi? Hold on. I got it right here. I've been watching your tweets and a lot of you are freaking out about your page speed, so I just wanted to <laughs> kind of uh, give a little bit of insight because I, you know, I, websites are the thing that really gets me going. I love websites back when I was on the dealer side. Um, the thing about page speed is that there's a lot that goes into it, so instead of just um, going after your vendors, your website providers, I would have a conversation because, uh, for example, all of the, the widgets and the the other vendors that you use on your website, like your chat provider and your um, the tools that you use, if you have a bar at the bottom, all those things, they talk back to that initial server, so that affects your page speed too. And then the other thing is, um, I'm sure a lot of us use products and then cancel, but we never go back to talk to our website providers to clean that code out, so I would do that as well. So before you freak out, Take a second to clean that stuff up and then go into it and assess. If That's the core is rotten, there is no way to clean it up. So, you know, we do have a couple of clients that have a Questions. chat thing that kind of hurts the page speed insights. Uh, it should never go below 90. Uh, if you have dealer.com, you're never going to get over 60. Uh, so, so, it's important. Uh, well, they're largely hung on software from the late 90s. And with, with eight, 10,000 dealerships hung on it, can't really just throw that out the window. Uh, also, they're not, they have no incentive to improve. Uh, the, the truth is, is that if, see, we do an exclusivity agreement with all of our clients. So we will not market another Hyundai in Boston. All of our clients are customers for life, they're family, and we don't have any interest in becoming the next dealer.com. The, the, the reason that we do that is because we work really hard to make this happen, and despite how easy it looks, uh, we work really hard to make it happen. So we want to work with dealers that are going to turn that into money, uh, and then we, they treat us with respect, everything is great. Uh, so, so we have no desires to... Is there a message to, there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, so, but the, the fact is, uh, I, you know, I don't have to have 8,000 dealerships. I would much rather have a few hundred that, uh, that win and that, that want to win, uh, that, that I like to work with. So, so, so that's just how it is. You know, there's, it's, it's one uh, make per market. Scott? I'm going to throw you a softball. It's the same question I asked you in May uh, before we were working together, and I found the information valuable, and I, I'm sure there's other people in the room that have the same question. Uh, a lot of us are forced to use the big name website providers by our OEM. Uh, in my case, it was Cobalt. And no matter, uh, I used Automark, I used a bunch of tools to try and trick the thing into doing something that it seemed to be completely incapable of. But what I asked you about was, how, what advice you could give about what, what my strategy should be to either keep that thing or to shut it down or what, what I should do with that. And I'm sure other people struggle with the same question. Sure. So, I mean, of course you have to keep that website. 
Uh, in your case, we swapped domains. Uh, he actually had the domain HyundaiofBoston.com. And so that, that just makes the, that makes Cobalt so happy and we just hand him HyundaiofBoston.com and we took BillDoobieHyundai.com and doubled the sales with it. So you've got to have a premium website. That's just the fact. Uh, if you don't have a premium website and you're expecting the manufacturer to provide one for you, you are leaving tons of money on the table and you're, and you're going to get smoked by anybody like me that comes into your market. <clears throat> Questions? So, Got one? Um, I was just going to say, I can't believe I might actually possibly be defending dealer.com. <laughs> cannot <laughs> okay. believe I just said that. But we, um, we've been a client of theirs forever, and our speeds aren't great. They're 70 on mobile and 75 for desktop. Okay. So maybe a little bit higher than the 60. Yeah. But just one thing I've noticed with their newer websites, they do, do seem to perform better. So if you're on an older version of one of their websites, you might want to consider upgrading. Okay. The other thing, too, is I noticed this on a lot of dealer websites is that your images, sometimes people will take the full resolution graphic from an iPhone photo and just put it on the website, and that'll kill your speed. So those are just a couple right. of Right, and that is something that should be handled. If you have a professional website, that's going to be handled on the fly uh, with resizing and optimizing the images on the, on the fly. So it really doesn't matter what uh, resolution you upload it to unless you're dealing with an amateur provider. Um, so, so the fact is, is that you know, it do, it's not a hard leap to get here. <laughs> if, if I do every dealership on the block and I do SEO, all I'm doing is artificially increasing my own costs. So why do anything? And the fact is, no matter what you've been sold, most of them don't do anything. Absolutely. Uh, time for one more question? One more question. One more question. These are some good questions, though. Absolutely. Okay. SEO questions, website questions. Going once. Twice. Let's so. give Christian a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you.